You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. I am Daniel. And I'm Clint. Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Bulldogs here on Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, Daniel and I are going to be talking just like fans do. And just let you know, Sonos Mm. is sponsoring this podcast. Uh, Sonos is the official sponsor of college football. Go to Sonos.com for more or the official ESPN college game day experience of college football, uh, Sonos.com. Daniel, we talk like fans do on this podcast. And so yesterday's episode, well, because you're a fan and Uh I'm a fan. And And so we just thought, why don't we like just be the things that we are? Like, what if we just fascinating? I know. Interesting choice that we've made. Interesting creative direction that we've taken the podcast in. Uh, Yeah, that's right. We're not gurus or insiders. We are fans first and foremost. He's a Georgia fan. I'm a Georgia fan. Mm. And that's what the podcast is all about for fans, by fans. Sometimes we we always say we talk about Georgia and college football the way that you would with your buddies at work or at a tailgate or sitting around having a drink with your friends. And sometimes those conversations get into the weeds and you start talking about the dumbest bowl games of all time, Clint. And don't, that, don't tell me you guys haven't done it, okay? That's done it. It's just true to the brand. It's true to the podcast. So if you haven't heard that yesterday, we counted, we ranked the top 10 dumbest bowl games, uh, bo- dumbest bowl game names of yes. all time. Um, if you think you know what one of them is on the list, uh, go back and listen. Go back and watch and find out so you can find that. And all of our episodes on audio, wherever you listen to podcasts or on YouTube, subscribe, leave us a comment, rating, review, whatever. Thanks. Now, today, Clint, yes. we're back to Georgia. There's, yep. a, there's a game of significance coming up in uh, less than two weeks, about a week and a half away, Clint. Ooh. It's not this Friday. But it is next Friday. Speaking of holiday schedule, let me just boil it down for you. We're putting out an episode every day. This is what we're doing. On um, Hi we, there, we'll be here. You understand? Christmas Eve, we'll be putting out an episode. That's, that's fine. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays, we obviously never put out episodes. But all next week, leading up to Friday, Friday morning, the morning of the game against Michigan, there'll be an episode waiting for you, and we'll be fairly jacked up. Just to be 100% clear, if you want to see the full lather, then Mm. check back in Mm. a week from Friday. So we'll be here all along the way. Significant game coming up. We got some coaching news and some what we wish was coaching news coming up later on the pod. But for now, let's focus on Michigan. We haven't done a ton on Michigan yet, Clint. I assume you've watched some Michigan football this year. I've watched some Michigan football this year. Uh, We both watched a heck of a lot of Georgia football this year. And so let me just get, let's do one word, opening thoughts. When you think about this Georgia-Michigan matchup, Give me one word that jumps to mind. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna add I'm gonna give you a phrase. Um, uh, you never could follow directions. I, look, you know this by now. I I just I'm I'm ungovernable. Um, <laughs> sleeping sleeping giant. Okay. Okay. Now, Did Jordan that. Davis fall asleep? No, he didn't fall asleep. That, okay. On on theoretical insight alone, this matchup with Michigan seems like it far favors Georgia. Michigan is a run first team. They won against Ohio State 42 to 24, whatever it was, having Cade McMahon, I think, pass for 180 yards in interception, no touchdowns. They ran for days. And, uh, and that was a reasonably State. high output for him on the year. That's right. In other wins that they've had this year, he's thrown for 150, 160. So on paper, all of a sudden, theoretically, how we've played football all year long, Georgia fans out here saying, hey, hey, 
this is a great matchup. Couldn't have asked for a better matchup. Try to run on our on our defense. Try to stuff it against Jordan Davis and Tyndall and Quay and the Kobe and yeah, you know, got on the list. I, I'm just here to tell you the that that's not the thing that scares me. That's not the thing that says sleeping giant to me. Okay. Okay. It's the other side of the ball with Michigan's defense, Daniel. Okay. And that's a sleeping giant. And if you think they're mm. just going to do – if they have the same mentality of their offense, their offense is just kind of like plodding along, you know, that's not their defense. Their defense can ball, y'all. And our offense from what we saw last game against Michigan defense – uh, makes me think that's a that's a slumbering giant waiting to feast, and so that's that's my initial thought. I'm not with all y'all who are so 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 excited for this matchup. I think I have I have a little bit of caution. What's your um? Idea? Let me help you out here, Clint. Okay, okay. Let me, let me help oh, you out okay. for the people. Oh, here we go. Let's here just... we go. Ooh. You're an idiot. Okay. <laughs> Mm. Let me let me let me explain why. Okay. Because there's there's one word. I knew, I knew you would. By the way, this is my whole entire friendship with Daniel. It's him just saying, Clint, you're an idiot. Let me tell you how. I think this was our first conversation we ever had. We started talking about something and I said, Clint, you're an I idiot. Said our friendship let, is based let on me this. tell you why. Daniel and I let literally me have based everything off of trying to prove to the other that they're a giant idiot. Like this is this is. I think the ne- by the way, that first conversation that we ever had, which doesn't matter what it was about, I think neither of us believed the point we were so adamantly trying to argue for in that moment. <laughs> which is we've never talked about that. We've never talked about that, but that's but that's yes. funny. Um, yes. Okay. Here's here's the word, the one word that describes this matchup, okay, uh, and it is the word shutout. That's the word, Clint. They ain't scoring. So let me ask you this. Oh no, can we lose if they don't score? Buckets. But I changed my answer. Buckets, Daniel. This is everything that we said against <laughs> Alabama. Daniel, Daniel. Buckets. No, buckets. I never said that. I never said that against Alabama. Never said that against it's Alabama. Reminiscent of things like you said against Alabama. No, 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 no. They, listen, I didn't stutter. Shut out. They're not going to score a point. Okay. So, do you have do Michigan, you have somebody in Atlanta or in Athens that you're trying to like win over right now? Are you trying? Michigan to leads the country in plays of over fifty yards. Did you know that? They lead the country in offensive plays over 50 yards. It's 17 offensive plays over 50 yards on the season. They have five different backs or or ball carriers that have runs over 50 yards. At least one. Some multiple. Five different ball carriers who have runs over 50 yards. So they have explosive plays. But to your point, Clint... They have explosive plays in two, three ways. Way number one, running the ball. Yeah. Way number two, trick plays, end of rounds, wide receivers throwing the ball down the field. Did you watch the Big Ten Championship game? That's what happened against Iowa, the old end of round pass down the field. So explosive play number two, trick plays. Explosive play number three, the backup quarterback, the freshman kid. They put in J.J., whatever his name is. And that guy will lull you to sleep, and then he will hit you deep with a big play every now and then. Not that often. McNamara obviously still plays the vast majority of the snaps. But McNamara is not pushing the ball downfield. Okay, So when they say they lead the country in explosive plays, plays over 50 yards, they're not doing it with Bryce Young. Okay, They're not doing it the way that Alabama did. And listen to me. You're not running the ball. You're not breaking explosive runs against Georgia. Alabama fan, in the comment, let us know, even with a giant lead trying to milk the clock, how did Alabama run the ball? How did the run game go for Alabama? How did how did that work out for Alabama? Please, Alabama fan, let us know. You're not going to run the ball against Georgia, and Michigan's not going to beat you through the air 
if they can't run the ball, period. The defensive game plan won't be nearly as bad as it was against Alabama. I, Cade McNamara I does not scare me whatsoever. This will be a shutout. I'm not saying George is going to light up the scoreboard, but Michigan won't score. End of list. Buckets. I'm changing my word to buckets. Uh, hey, we're going to mm. come back up to this, let you know about uh, a offensive coordinator that's staying with us, and then we're going to talk about Tom Crean and how he needs to go. But first, this is it, the putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software. To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is number one cloud financial system to power your growth. With visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, NetSuite is everything you need to do or to grow in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying ahead of the competition. 93% of surveyed businesses increase their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. Over 28 Thousand businesses have already used NetSuite for the new year. NetSuite is a new financial program for those ready to upgrade to netsuite.com slash locked. Head over to netsuite.com slash locked for special one-of-a-kind financing offer of the number one financial system for growing businesses, netsuite.com slash locked. All right, Clint. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of news over the weekend. Um Brian Kelly now has an accent. Not sure if you were aware. He has been, he moved down to Louisiana and now all of a sudden he sounds like Ed Orgeron. I'm not sure what Garth happened. Garth Brooks there. used to be an entertainer back in the 90s and he was like lighting the world on fire. And then he got. I think the old. people listening to the podcast know who Garth Brooks is. I think, I'm, I'm just sure. I, I mean, <laughs> now today, I'm 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 putting him with today's Garth Brooks. <laughs> Tiger okay. Woods used to be a golfer. He was a guy He's who used cool. to play the golf. Um, yeah. Garth Brooks is no longer the man he once was, and Brian Kelly is acting like Garth Brooks of today, not Garth mm. Brooks of the '90s. That's where I was going. Uh, yeah, Brian Kelly, the new head coach at LSU. Um, the 12 year old that he had running his offense in. Uh, South Bend not coming with him down to LSU. The rumor was that he was going to come on down, but he is not. Tommy Reese staying, not not coming with, not following Brian Kelly. And so Brian Kelly in the market for an offensive coordinator. And who does he call, Clint? He None calls other the best than, offensive coordinator in the SEC. None other than your boy, Todd Monken, who listened to me. Here's something maybe we can all agree on. Georgia fans, Alabama fans. Michigan fans who are listening to the podcast, none of y'all think Stetson Bennett are any good. Okay? No. That's something. Maybe no. is that something we could all – nobody, yeah. apparently, except Kirby Smart, thinks Stetson Bennett is any good at football. So, he did this. Todd Munkin did. He did this with Stetson Bennett as the quarterback. So, listen, the worse you think Stetson Bennett is – Mm -hmm. the better you think Todd Munkin is. So there let me is. just ask you, how good do you think Todd Munkin is, Georgia fans? How good do you think he is? How happy with him are you? Georgia's got a top 50 offense in college football, and Stetson Bennett started all year. So, so there you go. That's something to consider. We're talking about context. And we that's can't run context. Ball. And no, and no, look, here's, here's the deal. Without James Cook having his absolute A game, all right, and I mean A game on, we, there's no push on the offensive line. There's no running lanes. There's nothing. So, yeah, Todd Munkin is, let me say it again for all of you people that didn't hear me, he's the best offensive coordinator in the SEC, and it's not close, people. It's not close. I'll take him. Uh, give me give me him above anybody else. Brian Kelly, literally coming into LSU, what was the thing with Orgeron? What was the thing that got Coach O fired? Was it the lack of productivity on the field? Was it was it a defense that couldn't ball hark? No, his his inability to get this big time recruits, these talented teams, guys. LSU, talk about a sleeping giant. 
LSU is got ballers everywhere on that team. Sure. Okay. It they couldn't score points with an all-star cast of absolute stud athletes. Brian Kelly knows that. He just wants to get them in position. Todd Munkin gets people in position to do the things they do well. Look at our receivers. Look at Aaron Smith before he got hurt. Look at Burton. Look at I mean, the look man, at Brock Bowers. The, myth, the, guys. the legend, Brock Bowers. Um, and Brian Kelly coming down into the South, coming into a new conference in which winning is expected not after he builds a program. Y'all, he is expected to compete for a championship, a conference cha- next year. That's his, that's his timeline. Who does he go to? He picks up the phone because he's a smart dude and he calls up Todd Munkin. Todd Munkin says, no, thank you. This is a huge, huge, huge keep for Georgia. Um, I hope that we go back to, I hope we go to the AD and say, uh, bust out multiple checkbooks because. Yeah, Todd Munkin's getting a big time raise this offseason. That is for sure. And we said it before, Clint. If you're, I don't know if Todd Munkin wants to be a head coach or not. I assume he does. Sure. Um, but until then, listen, head coach of, or offensive coordinator of Georgia, you're doing just fine. Like this just is fine. Where are you going to go? I mean, you got total anonymity. Aut- I should say autonomy. You got total autonomy in the sense that you can call. You're 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 the captain. You're the head coach of the offense, and um, yeah, the scheme has been great. Georgia has, yeah. Georgia has not been able to run the ball gr- very well. The offensive line has not run blocked well. There have been a ton of injuries at wide receiver, a ton of injuries at wide receiver, and there's been the whole quarterback situation the entire year. But you look at all of that and still the productivity on the field of Todd Ooh. Munkin's offense, and it is pretty incredible the work that he has done there. Yes, sir. Um, uh, all right. That's a coach that we're happy is staying. Thrilled. And – and now we transition. But first, want to let you know about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the leader in daily fantasy. They are the college football daily fantasy leader. Prize Picks daily fantasy made easy. Uh, they have an award-winning app on the Google uh, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS uh, App Store. Uh, all of it, uh, the Prize Picks app can be downloaded or go to their site, PrizePicks.com, and uh, it's simple. Sign up for an account, you make a deposit, you enter the promo code locked on, and they will match your deposit 100% up to $100. And then you take that money and you pick all of your props. They got player props, uh, they set the line, you go over or under, you set your lineup, and you make money. The beauty of prize picks, you can play college sports, college football, bowl season, college basketball. And then you can do mixed sports entries. So you can mix college basketball with the NBA. You can do a little Anthony Edwards, Nick Claxton, Hmm. and Stetson Bennett. little prop combo if you want. Uh, Mixed sports entries. All of it, again, on their award-winning app. Go to prizepicks.com. Enter the promo code LOCKEDON for your 100% match up to $100 of your first deposit at prizepicks.com. All right, we have a coach that we love, Todd Munkin. He is doing well on the offensive side for Georgia. Couldn't be happier with him at the helm of our weapons over there. Um, Somebody who is not at the helm of anything, Daniel. I don't know what he is, what chariot. I don't know what ship he's captaining. Yeah. No, have no clue. Uh, Somebody came in a long time ago and said, I'm the captain of the ship, and he didn't put up a fight for anything, Daniel. He just said, sure, uh, let me kick my feet up. Tom Crean is not what Georgia basketball needs. Let me Now, let me say again, Georgia fan, we came on this podcast and we foolishly, like bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, young teenage kids in love, okay? Anthony Edwards was in tow. Tom Crean had had recruited a couple of fantastic recruits, Daniel. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, go ahead. This And, and, And we came on and we said... This is the new era of Georgia basketball. We're ascending to new heights. We cannot be happier. This is the man we want leading it. And this is the best that UGA basketball will ever be. Man, how stupid do we look? I, 
Listen, all those things that you said were true. They were. And I have no problem with the way that I felt. Here's the assumption that I was making, and I know it's a crazy one. Call me crazy. I assumed that all of those players that he recruited that signed yeah. were going to actually play for Georgia. There it is. And that every single one of them would not eventually leave the program. This is the problem with Tom Crean is whatever it is that he's doing. And listen, I'm not inside that locker room. I'm not inside that program. But none of these kids want to be a part of it. Whatever he's selling them in the recruiting process, when they get there, that ain't it. Do you understand? Like, that's it. Nick Claxton played with Tom Crean for one year, went to the NBA. Anthony Edwards played for Tom Crean for one year, went to the NBA. Those are the success stories. Both of them lasted one year. Every other high-profile player that he has recruited in his tenure, and listen to me, I mean every one Correct. has left the program, transferred out of the program, and is, in most cases, is finding tremendous success at other stops. See Severe Wheeler as the most recent example. The only guy he can get to come back is, and no offense, but like PJ Horn. Like, this is the, like, these are the guys that he's getting to come back into the program. And listen, I get Ingram goes down this year. This Georgia team is not going to win very many more games. And, and, and they have shown some flashes of being an interesting team to watch this year. They have shown some flashes now that Ingram's down. And of course, that's not Tom Crean's fault. No. What's, What's Tom Crean's fault is the overall picture of Georgia basketball. What's Tom Crean's fault is that it's a roster full of transfer portal and freshman guys because you lose a guy, but you have no continuity on the team whatsoever. Listen, it's bad enough that Georgia has to suffer through being terrible at basketball every year. Okay? That's bad enough. <clears throat> but do you know what really hurts me as a Georgia basketball fan? Okay, tell us, Daniel. It's 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 Nate Oates at Alabama. Mm -hmm. Alabama hires Nate Oates, who is, if I could just describe him, is the anti Tom Crean. <laughs> He's everything Tom Crean is not. Here's what I mean: Tom Crean is a high major failure story. He's a blue blood failure. He went to Indiana. He had a decent run of a bit yeah. of success in Indiana. And then they ran him out of town because they didn't want him. And Georgia said, you know who we want is the mm. guy that the blue blood ran out of town. Meanwhile, Nate Oates coached a mid-major program Yep. To the NCAA tournament to great success and then ascended to Alabama and is having tremendous success with the Crimson Tide. A school with less basketball tradition, less basketball talent, less basketball fan interest, if that's even possible, before Nate Oates got there than Georgia has ever had. And yet Alabama is the Where perennial they? contender under Nate Oates. And Georgia is going to finish dead last in the SEC, may not win a conference game this year. Oh, it's man. The hire was atrocious of Tom Crean. And the fact that he's still here is an abomination. I'm it, not saying you have to fire him today. But listen, no. and listen, if Tom Crean is still the coach on April 1st, I'm, of 2022. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, Daniel. I, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting I, pin. Here we go. If Tom Crean is still the coach on April 1st of 2022, I won't watch another Georgia basketball. I won't watch another moment of Georgia basketball until the situation is rectified. It's unforgivable for Josh Brooks to to allow this man to maintain his employment 
past the end of the season. At some yeah. point this year, you have to make the move and you have to get somebody in there who can actually build and run a program. You have to do it. Now, the program's in shambles. We're, we've talked again before about uh, Kirby Smart has these unreal expectations. Look, he went to the college football playoff. Um, he's been there before. He's been to the Rose Bowl, one of the most exciting games I've ever seen. He's won SEC championship. He's done good work. He's built a solid foundation, and he's still building it. This is He's got his coordinators. He's got his guys recruitment all the way through. Like it, He's in year six of it. Saban and all the rest of them, Dabo, didn't win till much later. Kirby's doing it at much higher success rates. So building a program, we we understand. We're not idiots. Okay? Takes time. All right? Tom Crean has had that time. He's not building a program, Clint. That's There's no progression. There's no it. progress being made. There it is. There it is. Right there. Look, even Jim, I know we can malign Jim Harbaugh is not a, I would rather have Kirby every single day. Jim Harbaugh, when he, he was a good coach for the 49ers, y'all, he got ran out of the 49ers, not because of Jim Harbaugh. Okay. Because, because the 49ers GM had an ego trip and he needed to go. Jim Harbaugh took him to a Super Bowl. He's made Michigan relevant again. All right. Tom Crean's not doing any of that. There's no hint of progress. There's no player that was less than highly recruited that he's elevated up to conference, you know, all conference status. There's no huge recruits that he's bought in that have transcended the team into the tournament. There's no chemistry amongst an offensive identity that makes us be relevant. If I was to ask you what defines Georgia basketball, there's nothing to state. That's the missed problem. shots. That's yeah. what defines Georgia basketball. People shooting who have no business shooting. That's Tom Crean offense so far under his tenure. It's look, I he doesn't have to be fired right now. You do whatever strategically best for the program. Sure. Whenever you can bring in, whenever you feel like is the right time to bring in a new coach. It might be too early in the season, but the handwriting's on the wall. Tom Crean has to go. This has to be his last season in Athens. And we have got to get somebody in there who, who is on the rise, who is a winner, who is exceeding expectations, who's doing more with less. Because guess what? At Georgia, we have less. I know we're in a talent-rich state, but we have less. We need somebody who can win with less talent. So that we can then acquire more talent when we become a place that people want to play for, not the other way around. There it is. There it is. Uh, hey, we're going to be back tomorrow. This is Locked on Bulldogs, your team every day. We'll see you guys then. See you.